Allez. Right. Oh, he's busy place. <laughs> okay, so ah, get out of here before I get run over. Oh, I'm in the wrong gear. Oh no, change, change. Can't find them, grind them. There we go. Okay, heading back the other way now. Just leaving from the Danford Lake Beach there. People launching boats and stuff. Gear down a little bit. Okay, so uh, one thing about uh, bike safety, I, I guess I'm gonna have to do that. You know, it's gonna be a while before I do my motorcycle vlogs and pretty much there's a lot of stuff from motorcycles that translates into uh, pedal bikes too. The bipedal, the rotary bipedal contraption. Yeah, these rotary bipedal contraptions. Um, two, yeah, yeah, anyway, uh, and that is the safety on a bike. Now, a lot of people tend to cop up attitudes, whether on a motorcycle, whether on a bicycle, or whether they're in a car. And the attitudes are kind of, this is my road kind of attitude. Now, this isn't where I give you the lecture, watch out for bicycles and bicycles and bicycles and bicycles, and we're, we're never at fault. There are many people on bicycles uh, that do stupid things. And then they get into trouble and then they blame everybody else. You see it in town all the time uh, where, you know, the. They, they basically, they, you know, they run the light, they, uh, you know, switch lanes without signaling. They do everything, like, I mean, if cars have to signal, you got to signal. I mean, how else are they going to know where you are? The other thing is, is you're just smaller. There's just something you got to, got to accept as a fact. Yeah, let's gear up now. Get off these stones. Uh, it's just something you got to accept as a fact that people can't see you. Even if they want to see you, they can't see you. Uh, the other thing is judging distance or speed. A lot of people can't judge your speed. Uh, this is the same problem they have with motorcycles. That's why you always have that dreaded left-hand turn for bicycles and motorcycles, where people pull out in front of you thinking they got all the time in the world because, well, he's a bicycle, he's not going very fast. Now on something like this, they'd probably be right because this thing is slow as anything. I got like little girls on tricycles passing me. Uh, this thing's so slow, but if you're on a road bike that's cruising at 25, 30 kilometers an hour and you're really booking it, and, uh, you got some guys uh, hit like, you know, 50 or 60 kilometers an hour, which is just insane speed on, you know, on, on such thin tires, but they'll do it. And the technology is there. And if the human being is in good enough shape to do that, well, they're going to do that. And no one's going to be able to judge that speed when you're coming up. So it's really more up to you to kind of, Treat it like everybody's trying to kill you. Uh, ride defensively. Be Drive defensively. Uh, yes, everybody's got to watch out for it, but I'm not even talking about distracted drivers. Distracted drivers, that's a whole bag of, bag of bolts on its own, right? But I'm just talking about people who are paying attention on the road. They cannot, you know, they, they see a bicycle, they're not thinking 25, 30, 40, 50 kilometers an hour. They're thinking, snail speed they're thinking oh i got all the time in the world i'll just pull out in front of this guy next thing you know he's on your hood so there's that and then the guy riding he sees the car he knows they can't judge speed but yet he tries to beat the train anyway so this is at the end of the day it's not a matter of who's right who's wrong it's a matter of do you want to live or not or how many injuries do you want to sustain to be in the right because law of tonnage is something that always always prevails I just blew that stop sign there. There's a perfect example there. I, I, I did it myself. But law of tonnage always prevails, meaning that, uh, well, wow, <laughs> it's gonna be slower coming back, that's for sure. Um, even if I'm gonna, he's gonna do more damage to me than I am to him, even if he's parked. So if I slam into him at three kilometers an hour, I'm gonna be on my ass, there's no doubt about that. Uh, probably doing a face plant, lose a couple of teeth. I hit him at 10 to 15 kilometers an hour, I will definitely, definitely sustain injuries and total the bike. If I uh, hit him above uh, 25 kilometers an hour, there's a, probably about a 70% chance I could die. Uh, now these numbers, translate from motorcycles and to bicycles about the same because once you leave the seat and the bars and you're you're a projectile then it's just law of inertia momentum 
angular momentum, bipedal force, centrifugal force, and just blunt force trauma that does you in. And 90% of your deaths are gonna be blunt force trauma, meaning that sudden stop from 15 kilometers, 25, 35, whatever. If you're doing 40 kilometers and above, you're pretty much 90% gonna be dead, you know? So that's what you have to consider before you, you get onto the well. They gotta watch out for me. Well, what you have, hopefully you can hear me over the wind, but what you really have to put into perspective is it's, it doesn't matter if they're in the wrong. You're the one that gets killed. Uh, you know, you could possibly kill somebody if you go through their window or something like that and then, you know, take them out that way, you know. But chances are, you know, you're going to be dead. They just have to clean the blood splatter and pull out the dent on the hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that, that's the way to look at it. So, and when you do look at it like that, I find you're less hostile. Because you know people are gonna cut you off. You know people are gonna do that. But you also, you account for it more subconsciously. For example, you know you can't accelerate like a car. You know you can't accelerate like a motorcycle. Uh, so to get out of trouble's way, you gotta give yourself room. It's that simple. You have to give yourself room. And if you don't have room, uh, bad things are gonna happen to you. So you're probably saying, Reg, why are you on the wrong side of the road to begin with? Well, there's a lot of tractor trailers. I'm giving them room. But I could be way over there very easily if I see them coming in time. But even a tractor trailer, you get a bit of wind in your ear like there is today. I might not hear him until he's like right on me. And if he's even a little bit not judging my distance or doesn't see me, again, I'm not going to leave my life in his hands uh, or anybody's. I'm going to take you know, do the best for myself coming out at something like this, especially intersections. Nobody would see me until I'm about here. So if they were coming out really fast, you know what I mean? You, they're just not gonna see you. It's just the way it is. It's not good, it's not bad. It's just, just the way it is. Let me take her down one gear. Whew. Well, you see that guy way up ahead, I know he's coming, so. Although, yeah, you're supposed to be on the right side of the road, but. To me, it always depends on the road. In town, you can get away with it because there's bicycle lanes and stuff like that. Out here, not so much, you know. <laughs> I know everybody. I'm like populars. Yeah, that's pretty cool. When you live in a small town, eh? Now, had he not honked or waved at me, we'd be feuding. You could start a family feud if you don't wave at somebody that you might possibly know. So that's why when you're in a small town, wave at everybody. Because if it turns out that you did know them and you didn't wave at them, it'd be like, you didn't wave at me and you know me? Why would you do something like that? What the hell? A bridge in the middle of nowhere? What? I gotta go see this.